There you go. Welcome back. Welcome back to another Genius Days. Today we're talking about spirituality through humor. Now, guys, laughter is so important. It's a type of release. It's a type of way that we start to get social with other people. And I've noticed that growing up, I used to use humor sometimes as a crutch, but then I started to understand the power within the humor itself and how, how much of a gift it truly is to look at things in a lighter perspective and allow yourself to see things in a new way. I think one of the great gifts to humor is understanding that you're a little bit of a jester, like you're coming from that energy of the heart and you are much more lighter on your feet and you're able to really appreciate the jokes around you, not in a self-deprecating way, but in a way where you're actually having a little bit of that playful arrogance, maybe a little bit of that, you know, poking holes into societal constructs and your own ego. And just like not taking life so seriously. Alan Watts had that amazing quote where it's like, Life is suffering when man takes what is serious that the gods made for fun, right? So when we start taking life super seriously, we start getting wrapped up in our own storylines and we start to suffer. So let's start on talking about this topic. Um, Ryan, I want to call you out this time to do a bit of a disclaimer for a change up. Disclaimer time. At... Genius days, we are saying the educators do not do what we do unless you take full responsibility for your own life. That being said, we wish you a pleasant flight, exit, left, right, etc. Now then, on the humor topic, <laughs> one of my favorite things to look at is comedy. Because Comedy follows strategy a lot of the time. If you look at the, co the comics themselves, they tend to have very difficult lives. Dave Chappelle, Robin Williams, Jim Carrey, Jimmy Carr. And they use it all as fuel to tell a story. And through the story, either you tell your audience or yourself, you try to make sense of what's happening or soften the edges. And it can become so profound that the laughter makes you realize, yes, I'm serious about my life, but I don't have to take it personal. <laughs> and it's in the not taking it personal, we get a some sort of free flow, also known as a flow state scripts. Absolutely. And it's in not taking it personal. It's like fighting. Again, it's like fighting. If someone takes me down, I don't have to take it personal. I just need to know, cool, I've been taken down. Let's roll with the punches. Let's do with what you have and laugh about it. Muay Thai, I believe, I think you did either do kickboxing or Muay Thai, right? Um, Sun Chai is a fantastic example of using humor to destroy your opponent. Now, what Sanchai tends to do is using a lot of things, laughing at the opponent, making the opponent angry, and doing all the things to just dominate the opponent's mind, both outside the ring and inside. And he's a joy to watch simply because he is clowning his opponent through the medium of humor and still knocking them out, tricking them, and etc. Now back to spirituality. Spirituality is very similar to fighting in my opinion because it requires daily grinding, building those habits. And one special way is of course, through humor. Anything can be meditation, even laughter. And then you have, you know, laughter yoga. Sumit or Ivan, any comments on that? Yeah, I have a comment. Uh, Ivan, do you want to go? Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll go. So essentially what it reminded me of when you said about the fighting, I remember watching this video, uh, the YouTube channel, I think it's called Mind Smash, where basically 
this guy was just like punching this fighter and he just kept laughing and smiling, right? And, and he just, that was so intimidating, right? Because he's like, this guy is not getting hurt. It's kind of like the Joker energy, right? I was like, whoa, this guy is not like getting hurt for some reason. Like, what's, is it me? Like, what's wrong? It's like you start getting self-conscious when somebody's enjoying a process where it's painful, but they're finding like humor or pleasure or depravity almost through through that moment right it's like it's a very unique experience and i would definitely say that i agree with you in terms of how you know spirituality is a dedication and laughter yoga you know when i was in delhi i see these people outside this is a holy laughter yoga club and in the morning you just hear ha 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 it's like like a like a very synchronized laughter you know happening and it would always wake me up so it's very f- funny to be talking about funniness. And even before this event, Ryan, you you posted on Instagram and they like, I don't know, they didn't allow you to post it or it was like a fact checking thing about it. or I don't know <laughs> what that was about. But anyway, man, um, yeah, I totally agree with you that humor is a dedication, just like the spiritual traditions they I mean, the word enlightenment, right, has the word light in it. So we've just got to lighten up. We've got to learn to use our lightness of being to actually get into that higher vibration. And I think that the looser we can be, the more flexible we can be with certain situations, the more we can perceive this world not as serious, but as a game. And a game is meant to be played. If you start taking a game too seriously and you start considering the rules too much and you get too strict and rigid with it, you stop enjoying the game. You actually start getting more worried about like what's gonna happen or what has happened. But I think in the present moment, I think the, in terms of the flow state, they call it the forever box comedians because they're in this state where just, they're just completely there. They feel like they're there forever. Like they can keep having these witticisms and cracking jokes. And even if there's a heckler in the audience, they can play with that and they can sort of, you know, riff off of that and make that a part of their performance it's the same thing with freestyle rappers right it's like they stumble but it's called spitting over your stumble spitting meaning rapping and stumble which is just like messing up or judging yourself in between rapping and i've experienced this myself that when i don't know what i'm gonna say i make it a part of my rap right i don't know what i'm gonna say next (laughs) and i make it a part of the actual lyrics so it's just owning up to your flaws owning up to your vulnerability like being vulnerable, right? Being, taking the emotional risk of the joke, even if the punchline doesn't land. And I think that's really powerful when we can get out of our own ways and start to make ourselves laugh, but not at the detriment of like having others laugh at us, but with us. You know what's the funniest shit? When you are not trying to be funny and you still funny. I think that's the most pure form of humor because it's you not trying. And um, when you see some of the top comedians and we just take, uh, let's just take some of Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's one of the world's greatest comedians at the moment. We can compare some of his his uh, routines and we can see when he's thinking about what he's going to say next and when he's just allowing it to come through. So it's, it's a very high vibrational thing. It's a very, it's, it's almost in the high levels of vibration. You know, we break down the energy levels into three categories, three main categories, low, middle, high. And it's almost touching the high levels. It's in the middle, right? You know, because uh, you know, we have, let's just say, we have a we have acceptance. Um, you know, we have neutrality. My bad. We have neutrality. We've got acceptance. We got we got uh, uh, willingness, uh, and we have we have. Uh, like, I think you start moving up. You got you got um, like those hustlers. You know, you got that hustler mentality. Those 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 people who like to work. They like to stay focused, right? But there is too serious. 
It's too serious. You take a lot of things too serious, man. When you move a little bit higher, right? We start moving to creativity, joy, laughter. You can say laughter is joy, right? And just, you see, creativity is this ability. People, people are like, people think that your imagination is you making shit up. It's bullshit. You know why it's bullshit? Because energy isn't created nor destroyed. So you cannot create something. All you can do is tap into it. Tapping into that frequency. Right? This is why uh, somebody commented on my post and they were like, they're like, oh, I see you living the good life. And I said, no. The good life is living itself through me. Because it exists independently of me. Whether I'm in it or not, that frequency is there. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to create it. I just have to relax. It's a state of relaxation. It's a state of peace. It's a state, you're not judging yourself. It's a state where your mind is actually quiet. It's actually quiet. It's not, it's not talking. You're not thinking about what you're going to say next, right? It's a state of being very, very present. And so when, you know, when we're enjoying these moments with our friends and we're all having a good fucking laugh, that's the place where we want to spend some time with, you know, when, when, we, when you can have a good laugh with people, that's the kind of people that you want to spend time with to recharge yourself, to regenerate yourself. We all love that funny person, right? Because we feel good afterwards, Right. And so, you know, we, we, what I learned in high school, I was taking some uh, college classes for, you know, for credits and shit. And I took this communication class. And uh, my teacher said that, you know, we create friendships out of needing something, right? We, you know, because we, we need, we need the people in our life. It's very important. We need people in our life. We can't do this shit on our own. You can go meditate by yourself, right? But you need you need people in your life, right? And if you want to be the kind of person that attracts just really good things into your life, right? It's easier. Watch, watch, watch. I'm about to fuck with you. It's easier to get everything that you want by being a funny, joyful person than by being like, a successful, rich, serious person. Because the, the, the seriousness and success will bring you respect and admiration, but it won't bring you love. It doesn't bring you love. You got your iPhone? Great, it's a fucking good piece of technology. It's good, it took a lot of intelligence to put that together. A lot of intelligence to put that together. That, that's, there, there's no doubt about that. There's, there's literally no fucking doubt about that. But that phone won't love you back. Because it's, it's in a state of seriousness. Right? And so, before I pass it on, you know, to somebody else and his, other people's ideas, what y'all got going on. I just want to say, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> that's a, I'm a studying, I'm studying a monkey here. And that essentially just means, means fuck, means fuck you a monkey. So use that, use that with, with your friends when they fucking with you. Use that, use that to tell your mom, your mom's fucking with you and you don't want, you don't want to, you don't want to tell your mom fuck you. So you're going to tell her, ooh, ooh, ah, ah. And, uh, and then <laughs> she, she going to. She gonna laugh or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. Hey, yo, all right. I'm passing the torch. I'll try that, bro. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome, man. You know, what, what I'm reminded of is this idea that, you know, we remember like funny characters from our lives. Like I remember my most hilarious or humorous teachers, you know, in school. I don't remember the other ones that well, but the ones that made me laugh, 
the ones that you know made me crack up in class where he was tell, telling a joke and it just landed you learn better when you're laughing right because you're not in this state of like trying to like you're more in the state of absorption right because you're released you're relaxed so you're actually learning better when you're laughing so it's very powerful in that way and also i don't know if you guys have seen the the image of the laughing buddha right so in the, in the image of the laughing buddha essentially he is in continuous satori is what they believe so satori is like a mini enlightenment or awakening but imagine a continuous like epiphany moment right imagine a continuous epiphany a continuous breakthrough like 24 7 that's the laughing buddha that's what he represents so i believe it's from the the, the japanese culture i could be wrong though but basically it's it's a very interesting archetype and i've always been fascinated by that in terms of you know when you laugh right these little moments of release or laughter they're just the seeds being planted right but now it's through your spiritual practice, through showing up, through being a comedian, through being humorous in your life, you're actually cultivating those seeds and you're bringing that water and you're making sure the internal environment is right in all these different other circumstances. So, you know, flowers not thinking they're sitting there being like, oh, I hope a, I hope a bee lands on me. All right? It's just it's just blooming. It's just purely blooming. And that's what you do when you tell jokes, when you let go when you start laughing. You start bantering. It it is this process of letting go, and it is a back and forth of letting go. So, yeah, that's what came up for me. Hey, I don't know if you guys know Big Mike from this one uh, rap group called uh, Run the Jewels, and uh, he had a Netflix show. Uh, I don't know. He probably still does. And um, he he did. He wanted to to teach people he wanted to recreate the education system right so i, I think it was a driver a dri i think he, he did a driver's test right uh those those like those driver's courses right and he made it with 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 like porn stars like he hired some porn stars right and they made it like like just very dr different you know like it was like it was like porn but educational in terms of like driving, right? So very abstract. It's very abstract, and that that what what they did. They tested the people afterwards, right? And they scored higher than the average, than than, than the general average of the, the regular tests, right? And so this is important to notice. This is very important to notice. Because it's more than just about, you know, that's the, the silly shit about, you know, getting some porn stars and whatever. This is about, this is about breaking what's normal. This is about playing with, with, with the norms and the rules and the structure of things. Restructuring life. And so, you know, we've all heard when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And of course, you know, that is very true. And so you can just, I feel a lot better about my life in general when if I'm going through something tough and I'm like, man, you fuck my fucking universe playing a goddamn joke on me. You playing the goddamn joke on me, bitch. I see what you fucking doing. I see what you're doing, right? And noticing that, that the universe is just, sometimes it's just fucking with you. It's fucking with you on purpose because you're taking everything too goddamn serious. And so the universe is saying, look, man, chill out, bro. Chill out. I'm gonna I'm gonna make your life harder until you realize that you have the golden keys to your heaven on earth. All right. That's this that's one of my new spells that I'm using. Is you got the golden keys to your heaven on earth. Right? And you need to grab this key. You need to visualize yourself grabbing this key. You want you want to. You want to activate your joy? There's a door in front of you called joy, and it's locked. You need to grab your key, and you need to insert it. You need to open it, right? And you see, when we do this with our imagination, I'm going to go back to the imagination. 
and which is your ability to perceive other worlds. It's your ability to perceive other worlds. And now, now I'm going to get extremely, extremely esoteric. I'm not living on the same earth as the other people here living on earth. And there, I know there's a lot of people on this different earth that I'm on. We're in two different earths. We're not on the same earth. We are really not on the same earth. There's, there's, there's multiple earths, even though it's just one in that it's in the now, but there's multiple earths. I'm living in this earth, my earth, the earth that I want to create. Cause I, I chose how I want to see and view the world. And that, that changed the whole world in and of itself. We created so many people began to, to shift their thinking that it just, it created, there was no, the vibration was so different that it had to create a new space, a new structure, because that's the, the structure that we are living in, right? Now I see Ryan Curtis, you got your hand up, homie. I'm gonna pass on the torch to you. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. Man, this is such an awesome topic, uh, humor and everything like that, because it's something I'm super passionate about and wow. has changed my life. Um, just on the point, like, you know, I think like humor originally back in the day, like, you know, we talk about the jungle days and stuff was used to break tension when they're on the hunt or something, you know, you're walking around, you hear a noise in the bush, you know, all of a sudden it turns out to be nothing. You laugh to release the tension. Um, that's like how I know it kind of originated. It's such an interesting thing though, because going on to a couple of points that you kind of all have said, uh, humor is a huge tool of seduction. It's one of the biggest, you know, a sense of humor will get you in any door because you're providing that feeling. And that feeling, you know, we, we all like to relate to the truth. It's just the truth wrapped up in a nice package, you know, because comedy is just, you know, a perspective of the truth. That's why it's so powerful. That's why comedians can say whatever they want because they have a responsibility to tell the truth, you know? Um, it's such an interesting thing though, because, you know, like, like you said, you know, you get that, that laughter or whatever, that uncontrollable laughter. It's such an incredible breath of fresh air. You know, sometimes you forget about that if you're not living on that same earth where there's not a lot of laughter. So if you're able to bring that into somebody's world, you can give them a uh, reference point that they may not have had. Um, for example, you know, just like in my own life, you know, you might have a rough week or something and you're kind of in a rut, but then you're like hanging out and something makes you laugh. You know, you're focused on all this other shit, but then all of a sudden something will make you like crack a smile, make you laugh. And then you realize, dude, what the heck? Like, this is what we're going for the whole time. The closer you get to that laughter, I think, is the closer you get to, like you said, that higher dimension of feeling and all of that stuff, because it is a pure expression. It's like your brain playing. Um, I just think it's really cool. And it's such an interesting thing to me because, you know, as you guys know too, you know, laugh now, cry later. With comedy, there's a lot of, uh, you know, other stuff behind it. And, you know, just like in people, you hear their story, Robin Williams and Jim Carrey, they use it as coping mechanisms. Or most of people, when they're younger, they like to be the class clown. It's an interesting thing because you know all attention isn't good attention but if you are doing it in a certain way or from a certain place you're trying to I feel like express that you can provide something because that feeling is what I think everybody is looking for and you know you just manifest it in different ways for you uh I just think it's a really cool topic and just piggybacking off of a lot of what each of you said. It all makes sense. And uh, it just goes so deep because I don't even understand what goes on in our brains when we laugh. It has to be some chemical reaction. Like, what is that? Because laughter does so much. Laughter heals. Laughter, it's just such a powerful force. So um, those are just my thoughts on it and a little bit of my insight on it. But I just wanted to share with you guys because you're making, the, uh, you're making my, my brain go. So I'm using it. <laughs> all right is it okay if i go go ahead joe so a couple things humor betrays grievance um 
there are books on, there's a book called How to Be Funny and um, uh, Steve Allen, he used to be on The Tonight Show. And one of the things he said is tragedy plus time equals comedy. Like, have you ever heard this saying, someday we'll look back at this and laugh? Like, why wait? Like, why not laugh now, right? Um, and so no matter what shitty going on in your, in your world, um, you know, like laughing about it just makes it a little bit better. It's a nice elixir. Um, like, I have actually a lot to say on this, but I'm going to just, uh, you know, the archetype of the jester is somebody in the kingdom whose job is to, when the king's ego gets too big, it's the job of the jester is to poke a hole in that bubble to kind of like ease the tension of that ego, which is inflated, you know. So once upon a time, there was a king and a jester and the jester pushed the king too far. And then the king said like, okay, you pushed me too far this time. I sentence you to death. But he goes, you know, you've been a loyal and faithful jester, you know, so I'll let you choose the form of death. And the, the jester laughed. He says, well, if it's all the same to you, I choose, you know, old age, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I, I just think that um, in, a, in a world where it's serious and our ego can get inflated, the ability to, you know, pop the tension of the ego and pop the tension of the seriousness uh, can bring us all back down to earth. You know, Sumed, you were talking about the laughing Buddha. I don't know if you know about this, but there's a guy in, I think, Newport Beach or Laguna Beach. He does the laughing Jesus. And it's like one of the things we know about Jesus is he was a joyful character. And so he just made sure that this kind of art that he creates depicts the joyfulness of Jesus uh, because he definitely had that side. And I like to think God has a sense of humor. And I'm going to say a joke now. I'm going to probably burn in hell for it. But um, why do women love Jesus? Uh, because he was hung like this. <laughs> okay. I like to think God has a sense of humor. <laughs> I see Ivan. It's just <laughs> everybody's getting a laugh here. So um, I, I, I like to think God has a sense of humor. Um, when I was getting baptized, you know, so I was hanging out with the missionaries for a long time. And they're like, Joe, do you want to get baptized? And I really hadn't given it much thought. I was just enjoying going to church. And I'm like, what's the downside? They're just like, none, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, read the scriptures and study and pray and do all the right stuff. And I'm like, well, what's the upside? And they're like, well, we could possibly spend eternity in the president, uh, the eternity in the presence of Jesus Christ in the celestial kingdom, you know, in celestial glory and i'm like okay this is sounding pretty good i'm like ready to say yes and i'm like wait well the church accept me with my twisted sense of humor and there was like a long pause and elder mcfarland goes it's a gift from god and uh um so you know sometimes you know our humor and our comedy there is like a little bit of a dark side but it's that dark side which is the polarity of the light side which helps us kind of see the full dimension of emotional experience. So that's what I wanted to share. Do you guys have a favorite comedian? Right now, I'm a big fan of Andrew Schultz. He, uh, was on like those shows on MTV back in the day, like Guy Code and stuff like that, but he does his own standup and uh, he's always riffing with the crowd and everything. You know, just real down to earth, dude. Pretty fucking funny. You guys should check him out. That's what's up, man. There's this, I can't remember this guy's name, but he, he like all his comedy is just like one liners and everything that, he's, that he says and he talks about. It's just about like things that are going on in life. And we, we look at like let Jerry Seinfeld's comedy. He, he, he's, you, you, you listen to what he said, he's, he's really not even saying anything that's like specifically like, you know, different. Oh, he's, he's talking about the shit that goes on in life. Right. And it's, it's, it, well, what I, what I noticed was that just like, People were laughing so goddamn hard at his shit, you know. And I was, I was just kind of, you know, studying it, and I, and I was like, bro, it's, it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. 
you know, and, and it's, it's like saying things as if they're funny makes them funny. I guess that, that I got to, I don't know how to say it, but saying it like it's funny makes it funny. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like the tonality. Hey, hey, bro, you got glasses, bro. You you got glasses, bro. <laughs> you know what? Hey, hey, hold on, up. bro. You got glasses. <laughs> you see, I'm not even saying anything that's like crazy, but like I don't know if you guys are laughing. I can't. I don't. I don't have the the gallery view, but you know, I'm feeling funny. I'm feeling funny just saying that. You know. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a vibe, man. And I think that, you know, wait, what you were saying is that, you know, it's that subcommunication, right? It's the, it's the subcommunication, it's the delivery. Like it's underneath what you're actually saying is that vibe underneath that's saying that, hey, I'm, I'm actually joking right now, right? And I think that women are really good at sensing this too. I think uh, my uncle told me this in this weekend. They said that women are cosmic detectives. So, so they know exactly when someone is like feeling bad or like their, their, their emotions and stuff like that. So that was really interesting. And also, you know, some people grow up with laughter banned in their households or their very strict upbringing. And so they start to repress that. And then eventually that ends up, you know, them just completely storing it, storing it, storing it after a certain point where they just let go and they laugh. And, you know, it's, it's really bad to repress laughter because it's such a, such a freeing thing, right? So I think the, the humorous character gives you access to different life experiences. Like if you see Russell Brand, he can just go up to a woman interviewer and kiss her on the cheek and just, you know, just be, a, oh, it's just Russell Brand, you know? <laughs> right? But he's, a, he's allowed, quote unquote, to do that because he is in that character of it's just him. It's just how he is. Oh, he is just European. <laughs> you know, it's like that. So your character gives you access to different life experiences, and the humorous character gives you access to more lighter life experience. Meaning, it, it makes it more fruitful. It makes it more like you're cherishing life in a sense. So I know that neurologically, what happens is it temporarily uh, relieves pain. That's why, you know, clowns go to hospitals and things like that, like a lot of times, um, you know, and also the seduction element of what you said, RJC, um, laughter also produces oxytocin, which is the love and trust hormone, right? So, you know, kissing and cuddling releases the same chemical. So, you know, one thing leads to another, you guys are laughing in a movie, then you're making out the next minute, right? And in terms of my uh, favorite comedians, I. I like a range of comedians. I liked really old school Russell Peters, you know what I mean? And really liked, you know, Joe Rogan, uh, Chris D'Elia is another one that I used to vibe with a lot just cause it's eccentric and quirky. Like, I don't really like very mainstream comedians in that way, but I George think- George Carlin. Yeah, George Carlin's a good one. George too. Carlin was the best, man. He, uh, when he died, I downloaded his entire library and uh, he's got that freaking, what a freaking genius. Yeah, I wanted got to say something just a little bit about like we have a playful side and we have a serious side and if we're too playful if we're you know all the time we get perceived as the joker and people don't take us serious on the other side is if if you're too serious all the time there's an intensity but right in the middle where where playfulness and seriousness come together is called charisma charisma is this ability to say something serious and yet have that levity and lightness and that playfulness in the seriousness you know, there's a playfulness, but it's like what I'm talking about is dead serious. But and so I think when we can marry the serious and the playful, I think we can if we're too playful, nobody takes us serious. We're just the joker, the clown, you know, you know, he's just playing, can't take him serious. And if you're too serious, it's too intense, it scares the shit out of people. But right in the middle is like the ability to embrace both. I'm, I'm serious and playful simultaneously. I'm charismatic and um what I say is important, but I have a levity and lightness around it. You know, what I learned from uh, Frederick Dodson, when he was, uh, he was talking about how to, 
how to distinguish like you know a real you know uh, um you know uh, I don't know. I can't remember the word he used, the guru or something from a fake one. You know, one of those things was, you know, there, there's the there's the nothing matters. And then there's the nothing matters, man. You know, and and they're, they're, it's this exact same thing, exact same thing, just different frequencies. Right. And he said, if if, if your teacher cannot be funny, if he doesn't know how to be funny. If he doesn't have that that quality, then he's not he's not really there yet, you know. I, and if he's not a funny person, like you know, don't don't unless it's unless it's business, whatever. But you know, if it, it, it's if it's other things, you know, that relate to life, you know, life in general, you want him to be the funny person. You want him to have that quality of, of funniness, because that is gonna it's gonna break through that. It's gonna like well, fucking Tony Robbins. This guy, he's fucking depressed and shit. He's like, the guy's like, he, the guy's like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel like a big I just wanna fucking die. I wanna fucking die. And Tony Robbins is like, is it those shoes? They're fucking red though, you know? Like, they're really red, you know? Is it the, is it the shoes that are making you depressed? And the guy's like, the guy's like, first he's like, no, no, they're not, it's not the shoes. And the guy's like, are you sure though? Cause they're really red. And the guy's like, ah, oh, you know, and that, right there you break, right? And uh, from if you guys ever saw the Love Guru, um, the the Love Guru, he, he, I took his process, right? And he's like, he's like, he says that 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 one of the first steps is distraction, right? And and then you distract yourself, right? And then you can insert a new thing. You insert the new idea, right? Because there's the, the focus is too intense, right? When you're serious, your focus is like, it's like, it's just like a fucking dot. It's very intense, serious shit, right? But when you're humor, you're more like a soft light, you know? You're just kind of like, you know? And, uh, and you, you, you distract, right? Use the humor, use the distract, and then you insert the new idea that you want. Right, because you create that pattern interrupt, right? And uh, you know that's that that's NLP shit right there. You know that's how people are commenting. It's it's a pattern interrupt. You got to create that. It's there's too many. We we like consistency. We like consistency, right? But too in a way, it's like too much consistency. That's kind of fucking weird. It's. You know, we, we need it. You know, we need it. We, we need that. We need that people who go nine to fives, you know, people waking up early, work construction every single day, keep going at it. Right. We need that as part of a society to grow. But like, how can I, let me see. Let me see. What's the word? What's the word? What's the word on the block, homie? It's, um, Did you say it's like spontaneity. I got it. Spontaneity. Yes. But it's, it's, it's like chaos, right? If we knew what was always going to happen, we'd fucking hate this goddamn life. 100%. Now we fucking, we say all the time, you know, we, we want, we, we just want the, you know, good stuff. We just want the good stuff to happen. But when the bad stuff happens, whatever, then it's throw it. It's got, it's got all these different elements of life and you have to learn to deal with that. And that's what makes life fun. Right, that that the, that the negative things are there that throw this chaos, this this randomizing option that we have, right? Like in the Jurassic Park, the guy's talking about that that with the the chaos theory, and now even even in a controlled room in a controlled place, there's always a a, a chaos around, and I I I, I kind of think that playing with that chaos, playing with that that dragon of life. Right. With that savage of life. Right. You know, like like when 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 people be playing and running around with bears and, and lions and tigers and they're like they're like running and they're like pushing them. Like it's like it looks really incredible. Like I like it's like, whoa, like you have like a lot of like respect for that person because I mean, for one, they're brave. Right. But it's like a, it's like serious. It's no, no, no. My bad. It's a, it's fun bravery. You know what I mean? Because 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 they're not trying to kill it or hurt it or whatever right they're trying they're playing with the beast of life 
right? And I think that it kind of blends in with what Joe, what you were saying about about charisma is the the seriousness and that funness, right? And it's it, it's like learning to balance the yin and yang in your life. It's just that simple, you know. It's really not that complex, you know. We know this. We know this. We fucking know this shit already, right? But we just got to learn. We just got to hear it in different words and in different lanes, right? But at the end of the day, it's like. It's like Christianity, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam. You know, we have to hear it in different ways to really understand it, right? And so this, that's what it is. It's, it's balancing your yin and the yang. And and if 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 you're trying to be there and that's one spot, if you're not there, like when you're in a place, when you, you have the awareness to know that you're not there, all you have to go back is to the basics, to the fundamentals, and be like, am I balanced in my yin and yang? And if the answer, the answer is always going to be no. If you're not there, it's always going to be no. You're leaning a bit more to one side, leaning, leaning a bit more to the other. Now, Alejandro, I want to throw something in here and then I want to yeah, throw yeah. it back to you. Okay. And the idea, you know, Zan Perion, who I totally respect is one of the, the, you know, I see beauty in all things and women love a man who loves women. You know, they get a free pass, but one of the ideas that I got from Zan, which is amazing, and that is there's only two journeys in life. There's the journey from order to chaos and the journey from chaos to order. And I like, I like order in my life. And I think one of the things about humor is it allows us to have that moment of chaos to like lighten up and see that other side. You know, if there's too much chaos, you know, you end up in prison or in a sane asylum or something, you know, uh, you, you, you know, I, I run my business, I, I'm a digital nomad, but I have a structure to the way I run my time. So I like that order, okay? And it makes the digital nomad thing possible because I wanna have integrity with my clients. If I have 17 appointments scheduled for the week, I need to be on those calls on Zoom, on time, sitting down, ready. People are paying me for access to my intellectual firepower, okay? And if I'm hungover, you know, so like I need to show up fully for that, and, but, you know, a little bit of chaos thrown in makes the journey like kind of fun and interesting. And, you know, it gets us off of that serious. And so I lean towards the side of order. I love order. I love systems. I love processes. I love it when everything works like a machine. But I think, you know, the ability to throw a little chaos in for the sense of humor uh, makes a lot of sense. I just wanted to throw that back to you. And what do you have to say about uh, order versus chaos? Yeah, so... Let's just take let's just take my day, right? I'm actually not the kind of person that will plan everything that I'm gonna do day by day. I'm gonna like I used to be that kind of person. I really used to be that kind of person. I, and I I'd have my I'd have my whole week planned out, right? And um, you know, I used it to pull me out of the level where I was, right? Of of just too much chaos, right? And I and to balance out this extreme uncertainty to create certainty in my life um and to, to, to have it's like it's like you have a goal right and if, if you don't structure if you don't have the step by steps it's kind of difficult to to go towards that goal right but what i move towards now because what, what what was happening was things weren't always going on the time things didn't happen on time even as much as i as much as i i tried there was always things that were that were you know poking into this into this. So what I do now is uh, I just set intentions. You know, I set intentions. You know, which just means I I intend on doing this, right? And um, I don't I don't put my intentions in any specific order because I just want. It's like uh, let's just say I need to do go to the gym and I need to meditate and then I need to go to work and then I uh, I need to you know whatever wh whatever it is right but sometimes at work I have to get there extra early right because because it's a uh, because that's the kind of job that it is you know it's it's not the kind of job where 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 people are paying you for your time it's the kind of job where they pay you for your result and for for the amount of, of labor that you put in for the for the project itself Right, so if a project takes four months, you get you get paid in four months. Right, a project gets gets done in two months, you do it in two months. And sometimes, you know, that that there's shit where where I cannot 
I don't have control, you know? I don't have control of what other people are doing in their lives. So I sort of just set up my life where it's like, these are the things that I want to do and I'm going to get to them in the order that I get to them. And, um, you know, so I'll have to skip, I'll have to skip on, on this, I'll skip on that and then do it later. And that's, that's sort of the way that I, that I structure my life. You know, it's not very, there's certainty in that I know what I need to accomplish, right? Um, and that, that works, that works for me. And it's working for me now, you know, I think it's, I think it's something that people can, you know, can see, they can measure that, uh, you know, things are moving, things are manifesting, right? And it just comes down to intentions. Do you, you intend on it, right? And then you just use a little bit of your willpower, right? You align your will with God's will, right? And when things aren't going on, going, you know, perfect, you're like, okay, well, God's will, surrender to God's will. You know, I wanted it to be this way, but it's not the way it was. So that's, that, that's what it is. That's what it is. It, it's it's uh, God's will and your will playing together. And that's how I structured my life. If you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Yeah. <laughs> I, that one, there's that one meme. And it's like, it's like that one guy, it's that one white guy that's like, he's like, I don't know, I can't make the face right now. But, and, but they put him on a sun, right? And, uh, and it says, God looking down at you, enjoying, enjoying your date with a person that he's using you for character development, you know, <laughs> and you're like, you're over here thinking that, you know, I'm going to be with this person forever. I'm going to marry them. Da, 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 da. I remember that. This is how it fucking was when I was a kid. I was like, I'll be like, like 17, 18 be like, I think I'm going to marry this girl. You know, that's not how it really happened. You know, that's just, that was my character development person, you know? And so I, you know, I don't, I don't re regret being with that person. As people, people will say there, they're always, they're, they're talking about regrets all the time. You know, somebody mentioned to me on my trip, they were like, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm really upset about how the Spanish came to Mexico and sort of just, you know, they, they destroyed a lot of things and they killed the people and they, they killed the culture and, and such, you know, they, they inserted their culture into this culture. They forced it upon, upon us. And, you know, from one perspective, it's like, yeah, all that killing and all those murders, it's fucked up. But then the other perspective is like, we'd probably be still fucking sac doing sacrifices and shit right now. We'd be, we would be fucking, all right, okay, we're going we're gonna to give, we're going to pull out your heart straight from your fucking chest while you're alive, bro. And uh, we're going to give it to the gods because we need some rain, homie. You know, we got some fucking drought. You know, this global global warming, it's uh, it's that global warming, bro, so we're going to have to reverse it for the gods. You know, that's probably what the fucking, the, the agenda, the government agenda, the Illuminati agenda would probably be doing right now. They'd be like, they'd be like, okay, we're going to have to sacrifice a uh, hundred souls. We, who wants to give up their soul, you know? Because it's, what I learned was um, life was the greatest offering that, that you could give. Right. And so, uh, you know, I do rituals every now and then, and, you know, we do offerings to nature. We do offerings to to our gods. You know, sometimes we we, we smoke, we, we smoke to our spirit guides. Right. Or you get some flowers from nature and then you give it as an offering. You got some juice, you give it as an offering. But then for them, the highest offering was to literally give their whole life. That's why people enjoyed it. They, they were like, I'm chosen. I'm the chosen one. But through that chaos that the Spanish, they, they, they inserted themselves, they brought consciousness through their chaos, right? And they were like, there's only, there's one God, there's the highest God. And, it, it, and it, what it is, you know, it's like you, you bring all your focus and all your attention into one spot, one place, right? And that's, that's the order that we have now thanks to the to the chaos that occurred right and so yeah i guess i guess yeah i guess humor now now that i'm, I'm we're having this conversation humor has a lot to do with chaos it really does what yeah, you guys man. think i i agree with you I, I completely agree with that idea of like this this constant of like chaos and order and then order into chaos it's like the whole idea of like strong men you know create like good times that whole process right i think it's the same thing uh and yeah i think right now you know the hard times are creating the strong men and i think that we might be going into a bit of seriousness 
but eventually there will be more good times as as we become you know stronger we'll start to create more good times and there will be uh, a lot of that energy flowing through since we are genius days i just want to say this and i got to get going very soon um so i see chaos in order like the two hemispheres of the brain right and it said that geniuses had access to both parts of their brain the logical side and the emotional side together right a lot of the greatest inventors like da vinci they would you know study nature and birds but they're also extremely you know, tapped into mathematics and like measuring it very accurately and things like that. So they're using, you know, both of these layers together. And I think it's really powerful when you have someone like Francis Crick having a dream, which is yin, he's letting go, and then yanging through his dream, what he saw in his dream, which was DNA. And I think that's a really cool, you know, understanding and imagery that certain people, they get ideas in the shower or ideas in you know, when they're sleeping and in their dreams, right? So one sudden burst of insight when you're just going to the zoo someday. It's like, there's lots of these eureka moments. And I think those eureka moments happen through letting go, through laughter. So through release, you could say. So I think laughter I think, is very powerful. I think that laughter can trigger the aha. Or they're like, there's a simultaneous, like you get the aha and it's like, holy shit. You know, it's like, there's something funny about that. It's like yeah. I never looked, never looked at it that way. It goes from the aha to the aha ha ha. <laughs> or is it from the aha ha 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 to the aha? <laughs> exactly. Which came first, the aha or the aha ha ha ha? Aha. That's a profound. I'm gonna clip this <laughs> for the promotion <laughs> to this event. That's fantastic. Okay. Um. Any last words, guys? I got to get going, but you guys can continue if you want. No? No, I got to peel out, but this was a good uh, topic today. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for, for attending. So, uh, yeah, 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 I was going to say thanks for attending, guys. Awesome. All right, peace and love. May the flow be with you. What was that? <laughs>